Article 44, on the petition of Amy Hansen and at least 25 other registered voters of the town of Hampton, shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate the amount of $35,000 to help defray the cost of carrying out repairs and maintenance to the town clock. Such funds raised by this article to be used along with privately raised funds that are currently in the town's possession to complete the work of constructing a tower to house the clock for the clock's repair and installation in that structure. This shall be a non-lapsing account per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and will not lapse until the earlier of all funds raised by this article being expended for the construction, repair, or maintenance of the tower and clock or December 31, 2021. Majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5 to 0. Recommended by the Budget Committee 9 for 1. Fiscal impact note, Finance Department, the estimated 2016 tax impact on $35,000 is 1.3 cents per thousand dollars evaluation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 44? Moved by Ms. Hansen. Um, I have a second, seconded by Mr. Bridal. Ms. Hansen, would you like to speak to Article 44? Hello, Amy Hansen, 98 Lock Road. I am a member of the Hampton Town Clock Committee and a sponsor of this petition as well as 40 other citizens of Hampton. I'd like to give you a little bit of history around the clock, just for those who don't know it. The clock was gifted to the town by John T. Brown of Newburyport in 1897. He was a descendant of John and Sarah Brown, who resided in Hampton along the river in uh, 1639, just one year after our town was founded. The gift of the clock was accepted via, via vote at town meeting in March 1897, and in July of that year, the clock service to Hampton began with its first tick. This day was a big celebration in Hampton. People dressed up. They came, on, they came from all over. There was a big luncheon. There was a band, and they even took a celebratory ride, trolley ride down to the beach and back. It was a big deal. The committee of Sam a committee of citizens was appointed to act with the selectmen in preparation for that big day to oversee planning and installation of the clock, just like today. We are a committee of citizens here to work with the selectmen and all the citizens of Hampton to restore the town clock and put it in its rightful place as Hampton's timepiece. Reverend Dodge, acting as a representative of the donor, formally presented the clock, saying in part, I have the honor to present to the town of Hampton this clock for the use and benefit of the present and succeeding generations. It is committed with confidence to your care to keep and guard for the benefit of all people. After Mr. Brown, a donor of the clock, was presented with a bouquet by Mrs. Effie A. Cook, noble grand of the Rebecca's, Charles M. Lamprey accepted the gift on behalf of the town. His speech was involved and flowery after the style of the day. We quote his concluding paragraph. The town of Hampton accepts this clock and receives the gift with much heartfelt thanks and with the promise that she will perform her duty, keeping it in good order, that its face may be looked upon by generations to come. Its hands will point out the time to the traveler on their way, and the bell in the hours of the night will remind the lover how long to stay. I debated saying that because it felt a little racy, but they said it in 1897, so it felt appropriate. Uh, on July 19, 17, 1897, we made a commitment. The clock resided in the Oddfellows building until the fire on that fateful night on January 27, 1990. Firefighters heard the nearly century-old town clock bell toll for the last time at 3 a.m. And here we are. Just like in March of 1897, when the town approved the clock to go into the Oddfellows Tower, in March of 2012, 115 years later, the town voted and approved the installation of the clock at Center School. Last year, the committee came before you with approximately 60,000 funds that we raised on hand and asked for the balance of $90,000 in a warrant article. When the warrant article failed to pass, we went back to the drawing board. We heard the voters loud and clear, and we were determined to do better, and we believe we have. We redesigned the clock structure to honor the tower of the Odd Fellows building. We also intensified our fundraising efforts and increased our on-hand funds from $60,000 to $110,000, of which is being held in account by the town. This $110,000 will fully pay for the structure for the clock. We are asking the town for $35,000 to complete the actual restoration of the clock itself and the installation of the clock on site in the new structure. 
Uh, upon the approval of this Warren article, the clock will be installed in its new home in the summer of 2016 this year. The tax impact, as you saw, is a one uh, and one third penny. And on an average home of $350,000, that's $3.50 for one year only. Am I right? I will close with this. In an age of instant gratification, fast food, and smartphones, we must firmly decide to preserve the labors of our past. We cannot forget the countless hours by citizens of our town who provided care and keeping of the clock since she fell 26 years ago. We cannot forget the hours of toil and dedication spent by them towards her repair and restoration, of which two of them were former selectmen, Vic Lassard and Cliff Pratt. We cannot forget the commitment we made on July 17, 1897. We own this clock, all of us. She's a citizen of Hampton, which upon accepting the gift from John T. Brown, we promise to keep her in good order, that her face may be looked upon by generations to come. That's us. It's time to bring her home. And I urge everyone to vote yes on Article 44. If you'd like to learn more information, we have a website now called Hampton Hampton Clock. Dot com, and we also have brick applications as well to sell if you'd like to purchase a brick to honor memoriam anyone in your life. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Hanson. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 44? Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Um, I'm very conflicted by this article. I think more than anybody else in this room, I've heard the clock ring longer than anybody in this room. I've, I've lived, I lived with an earshot of it from the time I was born until I left here after high school. And then when I moved back here permanently, it was already down. I love that clock. I really, really do. But this is a private effort to put the clock in the particular location and in the particular setting that, is, that has been suggested. It has been done, this effort has been decided upon by a private committee, not by a vote of the public. And I think that that should be followed through. I spent four years of my life on the gazebo committee meeting damn near every week for four years to raise $120,000 to have that gazebo located, designed, built, and everything else. There were dozens of people who came in and participated for a week or two, a meeting or two, uh, six months or so. But there were only two of us, myself and Bob Labonte, who spent four solid years raising the money to get that done. It was presented to the town, the gazebo was presented to the town as a private project, and we kept our word. When it came to the clock bell, as the clock itself, there was a time when there were only three, three people in the town of Hampton that knew where that clock was. One was Glenn French, former head of the Chamber of Commerce, who was the guy who saved the clock, by the way. Nobody else wanted it. He said, can I take this? And he was told, yes, he took it kept it in his house in Exeter for a while, and then he brought it, wanted to bring it back to Hampton so that it would be within the Hampton town, uh, town limits. It was kept in the barn of Ann Carnaby down on Tide Mill Road, and the only three people who knew where that clock was was Glenn, Ann, and myself. We kept it there until there was a lot of interest in bringing it forward again. So the clock was given back to the town, and it sat in the basement of the, of the town hall for something around three or four, maybe five years, maybe even more than that, in crates, incomplete. Bobby Weber, generous guy, wonderful man, stepped forward and said, I want to make a commitment to fix this clock. And he did, and he did an awful lot of work on it. Cliff Pratt joined him. Unfortunately, neither of those two gentlemen are with us anymore, and that effort <clears throat> slowed down and stopped because of that. Harvey, uh, Harvey Weber did some more work on it for quite some time, and we've seen publicity in recent years. But the location of the clock and the funding for doing it, 
I believe still should remain as a private effort amongst private citizens, not a part of the tax base of the town of Hampton. I have already given, and I think many of you have too, I've already bought my brick. I already got, I already took one bite of the apple and I don't want to have to take a second one. I don't want to have to pay twice. So I, I, I tell you that I am very conflicted on this. I want to see that clock back up again, but I don't want it to go into the, out of the taxpayer's pocket. Not everyone has the same appreciation for that clock that many of us here do. And I tell you, I'm right up at the top of that list as to what that clock means to the town of Hampton. So I will go so far as to say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll help and help more of the fundraising. Maybe I can teach you how we did it with the gazebo, but I don't think it belongs on the tax base. And I remain regretfully in opposition to this article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mr. Moore? Uh, ben Moore, Ocean Boulevard. I uh, am standing here to support Article 44. Uh, the committee has been working for over four years uh, raising monies for this. We have raised uh, $120,000 gross, have spent a little over $10,000 in minor repairs and major repairs and planning for the clock. And we now have $110,000 that resides um, with the town of Hampton, awaiting its, awaiting the completion of this project. Not, and this is a public asset, it's a town asset. Uh, the town undertook it before any of us was born as a donation and we agreed as a town at that time to maintain and uh, hold this clock. And that's what this committee's, this citizens group is asking the town to do, to finish off the monies that are necessary to complete this project. I think that we have gotten uh, as much of the large donations that are possible in town, and uh, it's time for the town, I hope, to step up to the remaining balance. Um, there have been other projects that have started off in town as private issues. I think I'm correct in saying that about 20 years ago, the group that uh, was behind the creation of Kids Kingdom came to the town for the last amounts of money necessary to complete that. And Kids Kingdom, and I don't know if it's quite right to compare the two projects, but Kids Kingdom is now part of the fabric of this town. Um, it's always busy. This clock was a part of the fabric of this town. And many people, I don't quite frankly remember it. I was only here five years before it, before the Oddfellows building burned down, and I was traveling most of that time. But it's something that restores the fabric of the town. And $35,000, I think, is a small price for the town to contribute to complete this project. The one, only one rebuttal, um, and that is at the, for the location of the clock, there was a warrant article on the school board's ballot uh, several years ago that asked the town uh, at a school board meeting to confirm the location as being in front of center school. So there has been some public input and certainly uh, all people are welcome to uh, assist us in the fundraising effort. Um, so anytime, you're welcome to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, Ms. Bridal. Yes, thank you. I come up in support of the clock. Although I'm not as old as Mr. Rice, I've lived in this town my whole life, and I didn't get a chance to go off for 20 or 30 years. I heard that clock the whole time. I was also at the fire, fighting that fire when that clock came down. This is part of our history. This group that's out there has raised $110,000, and Mr. Rice talked about the gazebo being $120,000. This group has raised $110,000 for a building to hold a piece of Hampton's property. This clock is not a private concern. This clock is a piece of Hampton. It was given to us over 100 years ago. It was given to us, it was accepted by the Board of Selectmen at that time, and was, we, they, we, they had their word that they would protect it, save it, preserve it. That's all we're asked, that's all this, this committee is asking to do 
is for the town to pay. They, they've already paid for the building. The building's all paid for. All is they're asking is for the town to pay for their own piece of property. They have them, they, as I said, they've raised $110,000. I would love to hear this clock again. I would hope that the voters out there will want to retain a piece of their history and bring this clock back. So I ask the voters, please, let's finish this job. Let's save the clock. Let's bring it back to Hampton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Mr. Uh, Page. Yes, Nathan Page, 200 Drakeside Road. And like uh, Mr. Bridal, I also heard this uh, my whole life until it burnt down. The Years ago, I was at a selectman's meeting with Robert Weber, who went to the Board of Selectmen, asked permission to put together a committee to restore the clock. The selectman granted permission at that meeting with a unanimous vote to allow a committee to be formed to start the restoration of the town clock. So uh, in that case, I, I think we have a de facto town committee, and I don't believe the selectman has ever rescinded that committee. So I believe that we have a, a de facto town committee, so it is a town effort. So at that point, I think this is a small amount of money to bring back a good piece of history to our town. Let's uh, vote for this clock and get it back up so everyone can see and hear it again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Page. Ms. Ackroyd? I'm Elizabeth Ackroyd. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have been on this committee. I've, I live at 19 Forest Drive, by the way. I've been on this committee practically since its inception when I was chairman of the Heritage Commission. And this is an effort which is important to the heritage of the town. We had all the discussion about the three buildings owned by the town, but this clock is owned by the town as well. This is a town historic property. It is three quarters finished in repairs, and we are simply asking the town to help us complete those repairs. And we will see the clock before school begins in September if this article passes. And I think it makes all the sense in the world to try to preserve the heritage which is so often disappearing from the town. I would also like to reiterate what Amy said that uh, this is partly in memory of Cliff Pratt who was chair of this committee until his death and of Vic Lassard who was a former selectman and an enthusiastic supporter and was prepared to dig in and help us with the project. And for more information, you can see the designs on our new website, which just came up this week, hamptonclock.com. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Ackroyd. Uh, Mr. Lassard. Good afternoon, Keith Lassard, 173 Mill Road. I raised in support of this article. We have very little history that can be preserved this way. We're lucky to still have the parts of the clock that could be put together again and the organization behind it to raise most of the money to get the uh, clock established and back up and running. Everybody should visit the website and they'll notice that the cupola that the clock was in or the bell tower, whichever you want to call it, I'm not learned in exactly what it would be called, but um, it looks very similar to how it did on top of the structure that was destroyed by fire. I think that everybody will enjoy the clock when they drive by it. And um, I think it's a positive thing for our community and should be preserved. Please support the article. Thank you, Mr. Lusard. Mr. Jones. I am amazed at the passion that's been expressed about this town clock. Truly amazing. We're going to spend now $35,000, so some people in town can hear the clock and others can't, but everyone's going to pay for it. I guess that was Mr. Rice's point. I think that's a good principled point. But on a personal level, I am stunned that so many people want to hear 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Ding dong. Uh, Ms. Martin. 
Anybody Hansen. else want to be heard before we hear from Ms. Martin? Ms. Hanson. What's that? Amy Hanson. Yes, I'm sorry. I said Ms. Martin. I'm sorry. Yeah. You can tell as far as time goes. It's I getting can late. Tell. It's getting late for me. We run together. Right. Yeah. Um, saying, I just have to say quickly on what Mr. Jones said, is, is saying that you can't appreciate the clock because you can't hear it is like me saying, I can't appreciate you having your road closed because I don't live on that road. I can, I can understand that. So I, let me start by saying the clock was donated to the town and the Odd Fellows design actually of the building was different. It was shorter of the tower. And when they wanted to donate it to the building, the town gave $400 to increase the tower by 12 feet so that we could accommodate it. We accepted the gift, it's now our asset. So now it's in reverse. This is your asset, this is your asset. We've raised the money to house it. And by which town, I don't understand how a private uh, effort, um, why would the town be voting on it? Why, would, why did the town vote it could go in Oddfellows Hall if it was a private effort? Why is the town voting it could go at Center School if it's a private effort? That just doesn't make sense to me. Um, also, I wanted to point out on the, on the Lane Library website, on the Historical Succession, or on the Hampton Clock website, there are several articles about the clock over the years. And it's also interesting to me that the selectmen were very interested during those times when the clock was preserved by private citizens of the town. Thank goodness they did. Thank goodness they kept the clock in good keeping. But the selectmen were upset when someone finally said, where's the clock? And they started looking at it. And they actually pursued looking into criminal investigations to find where this clock was. If the town didn't own the clock, why would the selectmen be looking into criminal investigation to find it? That doesn't make sense to me. So I'm just reiterating that this is an asset of the town. We are very passionate about it. I will say at the 375th um, celebration, when we rang the bell, people would put their hands on their heart and say, oh, I remember that sound. It is a fabric of the town. It is history. She is a citizen of Hampton. And again, I stress, please vote yes on Article 44. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hanson. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, we're on to Article 45. And Article 44 will appear on the ballot as printed.